We have seen how to solve um, systems of linear equations by focusing on matrices and creating ma as many zeros as possible. And the matrices that we've been looking at were the augmented ma matrices for the system of linear equations. So actually we're going to build a framework where we can use the same ideas in a stru structural way. So first we're going to reduce a matrix to a staircase, a staircase form, which is also called an echelon form. Well, consider the following matrix where we have a couple of constants unequal to zero and you see that the elements non the non-zero elements are forming a kind of staircase and in the corners we have non-zero elements and these elements are called pivotal elements or non-zero elements or leading leading constants Another example of such a reduced matrix is the following. Yeah, you see that we have the same kind of staircase structure with uh, two leading elements, two leading constants, which are both one. Yeah, and the same kind of staircase structure. So what is typical about the echelon form, what defines actually a echelon form, that we have rows with zeros. Well, possibly we have rows with zeros. Well, if we have rows with zeros, they appear at the bottom of the matrix. Moreover, the column number of leading constants, yeah, leading elements, is increasing with the row number. which means that we have actually a staircase form. Now this is called a echelon form of a matrix. And it's easy to see that the echelon form of a matrix is not unique. Yeah, if we may use the same kind of manipulations, row manipulations as before, then you see this, this form will not be unique. So, we want to have a unique procedure, a unique kind of characteristic matrix. Uh, in order to arrive there, we need further reduction with what we call a systematic Gauss-Jordan elimination. And Gauss-Jordan elimination steps are the steps that we've been using before. Look at a matrix which is characteristic in a sense. Again, we have rows with zeros at the bottom. We have a staircase. And now the leading elements have the value 1. And also notice that above the leading elements there's a 0 in the matrix. Here there's a zero over here. Also in the, f the following matrix, the leading elements are ones. The zero row is at the bottom. And above and below the leading elements, there are zeros as well. This characterizes 
the specific echelon form. And the leading elements are one, and they are called pivots. And secondly, in the column with the pivot, all the other elements, all the other entries are zero. Thirdly, we have an echelon form, which means that we have a staircase form. So, like before, the column number of the leading elements increases with the row number. And since the leading elements are now pivots, I write column number of pivots increase with row number. Now one may show that the Gauss-Jordan elimination, which are the steps we've been performing before, so we may multiply a row by non-zero constants, we may uh, uh, subtract or add rows to one another, to other rows. We may switch rows. Um, this leads to a unique form that we will call the reduced row echelon form of a matrix. Well, the steps that we will allow to arrive at the row reduced echelon form are just the steps that we allowed for uh, solving systems of linear equations. Well, what are these steps? Basically, we allowed for three kind of manipulations. The first kind of manipulation is that we allowed for multiplica a multiplication of a row by a constant and by a non-zero constant. Secondly interchanging of rows. So if we uh, would say, well, let's interchange the third equation and the, and the fifth equation, this does not alter the solution of a system of linear equations. So this is allowed for this type of matrices as well. Thirdly, adding multiples of rows to other ones is allowed. So, consider an example. So the first row has still no pivot, but we can create a pivot by dividing the first row by two. And now we have two pivots. And we have a fully reduced matrix form. Well, the interchanging of rows, we see that actually we don't have a staircase model in the sense that the, the second row is not on the bottom line of the bottom of the matrix. So we change the second and third row and we end up with a matrix in standardized form or the row reduced echelon form. Well, thirdly, here we have a matrix with a second line, well, in the second column. We would like to have a pivot, but it's not a pivot because above and below the, the, the pivot there's still non-zero constants, but we cr can create it by removing one times row one from row uh, uh, row two from row one and two times row two from row three. And we end up with two pivots on the first and second row. And this final form is also the row reduced echelon form of the matrix. So we need a, still a definition. The reduced row echelon form of a matrix 
is the matrix that is clean up for form of a matrix A is the matrix that is cleaned up in the procedure that we described and it's denoted as ref of A. Well, we have that this reduced row echelon form is unique. And this means as well that the pivots, the number of pivots uh, of such a matrix is fixed. And so we may speak of, yeah, of a number of pivots in graph for a certain matrix A. Yeah, this is a well-defined number. This is what we call the rank of A. The rank of a matrix is a number of pivots in the reduced row echelon form of this matrix. For example, what will be the rank of the following matrix? Uh, the first row 1, 0, 0, the second row 1, 0, 1, 0. So clearly this is already the row reduced F echelon form of the matrix A, and we have two pivots, so the rank is 2. Now the next matrix is still not in row reduced echelon form, but we see that the rank is 1, since we may calculate the ref of this matrix by subtracting 2 times row 1 from the second one. And we create a row of zeros. So we have one pivot. One pivot over here. Well, the rank of the following matrix, the 3x3 the three three identity matrix, is of course 3, since we have 3 pivots, 1, 2, 3.